Boom, coming in hot, Chanchi. How we doing, brother? Dropping a Bon Jovi t-shirt today. I don't really celebrate Jersey that much, but I got this at his concert like four or five years ago. It's nice, right? Nice, dude. Four yeah. or five years ago, how did he sound? Amazing. Amazing. He? He's got so many songs, you don't realize. You don't realize how many songs they have in their catalog, Bon Jovi. It's unbelievable. Dude, they have so they do have so many. What, what's your favorite song? Oh, man. I like the... Uh, the one, what was the theme of uh, Young Guns? Young Guns, dude, yeah. That's it, right? <laughs> Do you know how long it took me to realize what a steel horse was? Do you know what a steel horse is? Steel horse, right? Well, uh, no, what is steel horse? It's what, oh, like, wait, a car in a car. No. A steel horse is what, like, the Harley guys and, like, oh, the Hells Angels. That. They call their their motorcycles a steel horse. How about that? On a steel horse, I ride because I'm wanted. That are alive. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah. Did you not? That's a good one, right? Wait, wait, is that is that wait? What, what, shot down with a shot down, down in a blaze. That was a great song too. The other one I like is the rose. What's that? Every rose. No, has that's a different stone. Oh no, that's uh, that's poison. That's poison. Right. Although that's a good one though. What's the one he sings about a rose? Ah, fuck it. Uh, Whatever. He's got a lot of good songs. He's got a lot John, of good songs. John Bond, thank you, bro. We bow, know you're not listening bow, to this bow, podcast, bow, but if bow, you were. Bow, 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 Punch drunk this morning. You like how you said your face on your microphone. I just hit my face on the microphone. <laughs> Your rendition of Bon Jovi, I'm like, I don't know who the hell that is. If I was listening to you, they're like, hey, who, what oh, artist is this? Like, I don't know, but definitely not Bon Jovi. You're like, yeah, it is, bro. Barrel, 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 barrel. So we're, you know why we're in such a good mood today? I really like when good things happen to great people. I'm yeah. telling you right now, I, I've bragged about this enough. I got to meet Anthony Volpe for, an, I spent an entire day with him. About a year and a half ago, with Al Leiter and with Jack Leiter. And this dude is one of the greatest people I've ever met. Other than maybe you, maybe the most down to earth professional athlete I've ever met. And I've met, I, I've worked a lot with football players and baseball players over 20 years, of, and, and I've never met anybody who I was more happy for making a professional baseball team than I am for. Anthony Volpe making the Yankees starting roster. And by the way, you're playing shortstop, the position that Derek Jeter played. I sent you a picture the other day, or earlier this morning, of Anthony Volpe at like six years old with Derek Jeter like rubbing his head. <laughs> I, I, I can't see anything wrong with this case. Can you? Hey, no, dude, are you kidding me? I feel the same way. I got a chance to, uh, I got a chance to to manage Anthony Volpe in the uh, Under Armour All American game in 2018 when he was a junior in high school, and uh, dude. You could tell right away, this guy loved baseball. He loves baseball. Like, he is, like, he's a baseball rat. He he took, you know, he was so smooth at short. Everything he does, you know, you could tell he just wants to get better and better, and that's how it's been his evolution since he got drafted by the Yankees. But just a, just a you know, this kid's a breath of fresh air, man. He's a, he's a, he, he loves people. He loves baseball. You know, I loved his interview when they, when the, first off, Booney did a great job. I don't know if you saw the video. Uh, really, I, was, uh, I, was was kind of, like, I was kind of upset about it. <laughs> he kind of, <laughs> Why? They, were, they were, they were like, yeah, dragging like him along. this is a very tough conversation we're about to have. I was like, oh man. Cause you uh, know, you know the end result, but go ahead. Keep going. That was it so was good fun. though. It was so good. And Cashman's in there and Booney's like, you know, it's, it's a tough decision. Then they, you know, dropped on, they made the team. I thought that was cool. But then did you see the video too with him in the dugout? Oh, with his parents, his whole family, his, family, his mom, his, his grandfather. Dad. His grandfather was just, just sitting there and then just went, Yankees! <laughs> like, yeah. your, your kid's a shortstop of the Yankees. Isn't that incredible? Dude? Phil and Rizzuto, up, Derek dude, Jeter, Yankee fan. Anthony yeah. Volpe. That's it. That's what they're putting is. I got one for you. This is very inside baseball. "Quote unquote," when I was with Al and and then, and I was talking to them, I, I I clearly remember the conversation with Leiter, talking about Anthony's arm strength, and like, yeah, you got to get it up, you got to work it up, keep doing this, keep doing these drills, whatever. Because before the season started, it was like, ah, he doesn't have the arm to play shortstop. Guess who said something yesterday? First baseman, Rizzo of the Yankees goes, oh, he's got a great arm. 
If Anthony Rizzo, first of all, he's got the catbird seat because he's catching all his throws. Right. And it's just a testament to the guy. His arm's not going to be good enough to play shortstop. He's going to eventually be a second baseman. Nope. I'm going to work so hard and get my arm strength to the point where you cannot not put me at shortstop. Like, talk about that as a professional. Like, you probably had a lot of things going against you. Oh, he's not fast enough. You say it all the time. I wasn't yeah. fast enough. I couldn't do this. Yeah, I couldn't do that. Don't have enough power. Doesn't play good enough defense. It's like, all right, well, you know, listen, I think sometimes when people say stuff to, when people say stuff to you, instead of getting offended, listen, is it true? Maybe you're not fast enough. Is it true, you know, that your arm's not strong enough? And then when you accept that and say, maybe that is true, then you can go do something about it. That's what I love. A lot of times in life, people say stuff to us we don't like, and we just get pissed. Oh, man, screw that guy. Or, or, you know, oh, I can't believe they said that about me because it's offensive. It, it hurts a little bit. But if we all took the time to put our egos aside and said, maybe they're, are they right? Maybe they're not right. But sometimes people are right. You know, sometimes the truth does hurt. So I love that. If Anthony Volpe, they said, hey, listen, your arm's not good enough. And then he goes out and obviously worked on it to get better. Hey, you don't hit for enough power. Well, the guy goes out and hits almost 30 home runs in the minor leagues. You know what I mean? And, and, you know, this guy can play. And I, I've been there before where, you know, you're not, you know, you don't play good enough defense. And I became, I feel like I became one of the best defenders in baseball. Cause I remember Don Mattingly saying another great Yankee saying, Hey, listen, a lot of people can hit, you know, they, they, either you can hit or you can, or you can't, but defense you can work on to get great at. And I think that's, that's, you know, what you have to do to be a great player. And I, I just think you're right, Chinch, Anthony Volpe, this guy went out and proved it. This was not a job for him. You know, I think they said, we're going to give you a look. And if you do well at spring training, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. But I think, I think the odds of him making the Yankees were not great. I really believe that coming Correct. into camp. But for him to walk away with the shortstop job, he went out and proved it. You know, he went out and took it. And he made them, he made them make a tough decision of, okay, we got Peraza, we got Kiner Falefa. Well, Volpe stands out. Volpe stands out because of the worker he is, because of the love he has for the game. So it's a great story, man. It's a great story. Whether you're a Yankee fan or not, you know, obviously this is a baseball story. Yeah, I, I give uh, Joel Sherman, our buddy from the New York Post, last MLB Network credit. He, he said this so poetically. He said, "Look, oh, I'm paraphrasing, but basically look at this as at about six weeks ago, Anthony Volpe was on trial. Are you the Yankee shortstop? And he said that jury, the day they walked into camp, it was unanimous. No, you're not good enough. You don't have the right arm. You're not good enough. And he literally turned every jury member, you know, that's the management, that's Cashman, that's that's Booney. He literally one by one had them, once the vote came out, say, yes, he is. He, he turned. He turned everybody. He turned the just, jury. He turned the jury just from just busting his ass on sp- in spring training. You think about the pressure that goes into that, too. And what is he, 21? He was born in 2001, Sean. As my dad would say, I got socks older than that. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, like, just the, the talk about, like, you know, the intestinal fortitude, as you say, that you need to have to say, I'm, gonna t- I'm coming, t- I'm taking this job. I'm taking this job this year. Like, th- talk about... Yeah. How long this – this wasn't – he didn't just show up at camp, right? What was no. this offseason like? What was his year like? What well, was men- I, he mentally preparing for for this Well, this training? is what I love about – I mean, I'm just saying if guys are ready to come out of high school, this is the difference. For him coming out of high school, you're right into pro ball. So you're into the game. You're into the grind, and you're into development, right? When you come out of college, it's not – you know, you're being developed, but at a college level. You know what I mean? When you come into pro ball – at 18 years old, like Anthony Volpe did, you're being developed now as a, as a, to get to the big leagues, right? So I think that's a big thing for Volpe is the fact that, hey, man, you've been playing with wood bats for a few years now. You uh, were from day one, you know, you're doing it the Yankee way. They're grooming you to be the Yankee shortstop one day, right? So him coming in now at, what is he, 21? Yeah, I think, I think he's, he's 21. Yeah, keep going. 21, 21 or 22. Like, it's just like Jeter. Jeter was at a high school, groomed the Yankee way, coming up, uh, you know, with all the guys that he came up with. 
And when he got ready, because I think Volpe's like a few days older than Jeter, right? Like Jeter was the youngest shortstop yeah, ever. Yeah, yeah, he's like a, m- a month or two Literally, older. Literally, yes. Yeah. 20 Sarah some days. By the way, yeah, right. He is 21. 21. 21. And yep. like, thir- like 300 days. So he's almost 22. Mm-hmm. But, but the point being, that 21, 22 is so different than a guy just coming out of college because he's been getting developed for three, four years yeah, in like the minor leagues. school of hard knocks. So, he didn't go to so college. Diff- he went to the exactly. school of hard knocks for baseball, yeah. Right, so he knows what to expect. He's been through the grind. He's been through the 140-game season. so different than doing a 50-game season in college. You know what I mean? So, you know, these guys playing with wood bats every day in and day out, you know, understanding what it takes. So I think for Volpe coming into camp saying, hey, listen, I'm ready. I've, I, I've been groomed. I've been putting in the work. I've been developed. I am stronger than I was when I was drafted as an 18-year-old kid. I'm now a man. And, uh, you know, that's a, it's just uh, that's the mentality that you have, you know, at that stage. Yeah, and the Yankees have grown-ups on their team. He's, he's in that locker room for these past six weeks, whether he made this team or not. He's sitting when, looking at Judge. He's looking at guys like Rizzo. He's learning from the best as far as being a human being and becoming a professional baseball player. That's why the Yankees, like, that's why the big franchises, when you go, you, you've you gone to, the, to those. Like, there's something. There's It's like driving a Cadillac versus driving a, you know, a Hyundai Sonata, I guess, sometimes. Like, you're you're looking at the greatest in the game. Aaron Judge had, had 62 home runs last year, and you're in a locker room with him, and you're like, how does this guy carry himself? He's got $150 million in a bank. But he still comes here every day, and I bet Aaron Judge is – I bet they hit early. I, I don't – there's no facts behind this, but I bet I bet he had a day where he hit with Judge. I bet Rizzo's grabbed him by the shoulder and been like, hey, kid, this is what you need to do. And I bet he listened to all that, you think, right? Yeah, oh, there's, there's no doubt. And I think the biggest thing is, too, when you come up as a, as a young player, you watch how these guys work. The, the guys that are elite at the big league level or at the big league level, <clears throat> they're not elite because they're, they're just uh, – they're, they're, they're just like everybody else. They separate themselves, right? They're, they're, they're glaringly better and they glaringly work a little harder too. It's the bottom line. So when you, when, you know, you, judge is no doubt doing stuff early. Rizzo's doing stuff early. These, you know, these guys that are the elite players are doing a little differently. So you're a guy like Volpe, even if these guys didn't say a word to them, he's watching, he's seeing how they work, how they do things. And, you know, like I said, I got a chance to watch a lot of guys throughout the big leagues, you know, the Ken Griffey Juniors, the Dustin Bedroyas, the David Ortiz is watching Manny Ramirez hit off the curveball machine in his 15th year in the big leagues. Like there's a reason these guys are some of the best in the business. And, uh, you know, I think that's what Volpe has a lot of great guys that he could look up to, you know, as a young player, there's a, that's an awesome thing. Cause that doesn't happen to everybody. You know, there's a lot of guys that come up with different organizations that don't have the Barry Larkins and the, and the Greg Vaughn's and the Pete Harnishes and some of the veteran guys to guide you. Yeah. I love that. Great point. I got a great transition here because I, sw- I've said this on our show before, but I, and I've told, I think I called you the day I was driving home from meeting Volpe. Oh, my dogs and cats are about to eat each other right now. Uh, and the, like one of the, when I went, went and did that shoot on Del Barton, one of the, one of the media guys from Del Barton was like, Hey, Anthony, I heard you might be get trade, getting traded for Mike Trout. And he just, like, he just giggled. He was, like, 19, 20 years old, and his, he gets he's hearing that he might be traded for Mike Trout. That's how good he might be. And he just giggled. <laughs> yeah. But, anyway, that's my segue into, man, you think Trout and Otani, like, were on the same plane or drove in the same car to go back from <laughs> from the WBC to... <laughs> to the Anaheim team and like what was that like I've seen some funny memes out there but they're yeah. on their way back and you brought this up earlier like man we saw them on the biggest stage you could possibly see now they're back in camp and like god can you get the Angels good can the Angels be yeah. good enough to make the playoffs that's the problem with baseball man it's like one or two guys it's not the NBA where Jordan and Pippen can take you to the six championships and you just put a couple other guys on the court you know what I mean like you have to have a really good team in baseball. You know, 27 guys, you got to re- be really good on the bump. Even though you got Shohei Otani, the best player in the world, Mike Trout, 1A, 1B, made the best player in the world. On the same team, 
and you can't get in the postseason. That has to be so frustrating. It's frustrating for baseball fans. I mean, to see Trout in the WBC with 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 um, big time at bats that really mattered, and and you know, that was great for all of us, man. And I think that's what we want to see. I, I saw Trout was talking like about the WBC, saying that that's where he wants to be. He wants to be back with the bats that matter, with the bats you know that that matter with the, with the season on the line and the World Series and the playoffs and have Otani right next to him. So, oh man, I, it, what a waste if, you know, if Otani's going to obviously probably go somewhere else after this season, just, we would, I would love to see the Angels make a run somehow with those two on the team. I know, man. On the same team. I got Stu, look at my face right now. Stu, man. Stu's butt's right look, in your face. Look, they got a mustache, mustache. <laughs> a stew okay. stash. Chich has a stew stash going. Oh my gosh, you gotta oh watch my this. God. Just to see Chich's stash. <laughs> Such bad allergies I'm gonna have right now. You know, I'm kind of allergic to him. I suck Why it do up you have for Chich. If you're allergic to him, because I love my wife, Sean. Sometimes you have to make sacrifices. <laughs> 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 That's a good Jess answer. Is like, Give me the cat stew and Chich, and I can make it in no, life. Just got- Chich, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta tell you though, Stu's, look at him. He's about to jump up. He goes jumps in a window over there, and he fights with like the freaking, I don't know, whatever kind oh, of so varmints bad. run outside our house. <clears throat> so, oh bad. my god, I'm gonna start sneezing so badly. That was terrible. I put Stu's uh, tail on my nose, guys. <laughs> it looked good though. That looked like a, like a bad guy mustache from like a, 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 a I don't know, whatever. All right, I think we've said it all. <laughs> what do you got today? Hey, tomorrow. Big guest. We got to do extra research, and we got to be really funny. Who do we have tomorrow? Pete Corielli. Yes. From Pete and Sebastian. Sebastian Maniscalco show. Yes, great comedian. Sebastian Maniscalco's uh, right-hand man. They do that great podcast together. Can't wait to have Pete on, man. He's awesome. He's hilarious. That's going to be a Um, uh, a uh, great uh, Go ahead. Great great show. Yeah, no, it's going to be a great show. It's funny because he's got a kid. I'm looking forward to this more than anything of your conversation. And we'll talk about this later when we prep for it. But Pete has a daughter who I want to say is about seven or eight years old. Sebastian's daughter, I think, is like three or four. And all, they talk so much about raising daughters, like especially like in an Italian thing, like, oh, you, you keep her safe. You don't let her date scumbags. Yeah. They have a funny conversation about that. But like you have your daughters are, are older than Pete's. I bet I bet the best conversation you guys have tomorrow is about raising <laughs> daughters, about, daughters yeah. about men Raising their daughters. I'm really looking forward to that. That, that That's going to be uh, fun. That's going to be great. Dude. He's going to ask you some advice on that. Dude, anyway. speaking of Italians, really quick before we go. Uh, yeah, yeah. I always speak um, about Italians. Have you ever watched The Offer? Wait, who's in The Offer? The Offer with Miles Teller. It's the, no. it's like how The Godfather was made. No, I haven't Paramount. watched it yet. Oh, that's a good one. Bro, it's incredible. It's, I I'm not watch. a huge show guy, but I've been looking for a new show. The Offer. It, it, dude, it's about how The Godfather was made. It's literally incredible, but it's a That's sick. Big, yeah, there was a lot of poli- too, there was but... a lot of politics involved in how that. Movie yeah, was dude. Made, right? Oh, it's amazing. It, it's a must watch. It's oh, a wow. must watch. And I I'm Irish. Check it out. And I'm Irish. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Irish. All right. There's your Irish yeah. opinion of a really good Italian mafia oh my TV gosh, show. Dude. All right. So good. So, all right. and, dude. Also, also, I launched out. I launched out the Breakthrough Pro cr- program yesterday on Instagram. So. I saw that, dude. Very fancy. Get no program. It's it's going to be incredible. Mental dude, mindset program. That was high end. Fun. You had high end cameras. I'm looking at. I'm looking at a high end video there, and I'm like, well, what are you taking all your resources and bringing them over to the other side? <laughs> that looks. Go to Sean's Instagram. It's sharp. Did Nolan cut that? Uh, yeah, Nolan oh. cut it. I oh, had my, my other my other my other buddy um. Uh, my buddy Soda, who does our Miracle League stuff, helped me film a lot of it too. So we yeah, put, go to Sean's Instagram. It's really it cool. Together. You know, man, I know what It's really about. great, dude. Between that and uh, who's that big fancy guy you went on his show that uh, a couple months ago? Ed Mylett. Ed Mylett, and then you got McAfee's your boy. Hey McAfee, by the way, hire us at Amazon if you're going to go over there at some point. I'm just throwing that. Out. I'm just throwing that out there. I know your boys listen to this show. We're very appreciative of your great. Pro- your great production staff over yeah, there. Yeah, like the Yunzers, the Yunzers yeah. need to stick together. We'll bring the Long yeah. Island guy with us. Fellas, I'm just throwing it in your ear. Just just putting a little, just a little bzz, 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 bzz in your ear. <laughs> if you go there, you need a baseball show. You know, the guys over here are ready for you. That's all we got to say before we go tomorrow. <laughs> all right, bro. Shameless plug. Shameless, Shameless plug. plug. All right. Bella's fucking barking again. Justice texting me. So mad at Bella right now. Do you hear it? 
<laughs> so great, dude. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Chichi. Take care. Right, take care of the Chichimino household, yeah, bro. I'm Lock trying. that place down. All right, buddy. Love you. All right, bro. Love you. I'll talk. See everybody. We'll see everybody tomorrow. Thanks for listening. See you. <laughs>